Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week. We take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, first thing this week is actually a closeout deal that we recently secured for an American-made neck knife from Ontario. This is the Kangaroo Mouse Knife, funny name, the KM1. Uh, Closeout price on this, just 30 bucks. Solid construction, 1095 carbon steel, makes uh, another alternative to something like the Becker BK11 or the SE Azula. A little bit larger blade than the Azula, in fact, about three and a quarter inches. Toughness of that 1095, of course, and you've got the powder coating to keep rust at bay. It's a pretty good feel in the hand too. I can get kind of three primary fingers on the handle. Uh, on the main section of the handle and the tail end of the butt cap catches my pinky quite nicely, I'd say. As far as the grind, it's flat grind, but it's fairly stout, so it's not gonna be as slicey as some of those other knives that I mentioned, but might be a little better for the uh, kind of hammering on it that you might, uh, might decide you want to put on a little knife like this. Sheath itself is pretty basic, but it's gonna hold it in pretty well. Just, you know, kind of old school. It's funny to think of a nylon sheath now as like this is kind of old school, but you know, there we are. And of course, a little snap on it as well. It will pull out, but it's not gonna pull out beyond that strap. Again, 30 bucks for this, pretty darn good deal. I'm actually thinking about uh, picking up a couple myself, maybe doing uh, some custom handles for it. Might make a pretty fun, fun project and certainly I'm gonna trust the stability of this particular piece of steel too. All right, next up, got a couple of frame lock flippers from probably the last name you would expect. Maybe not the last, but pretty close to it. Case knives, two knives. We've got the Marilla here on top and the Kinzu here at the bottom. Uh, even though the A is on there, I've, I've been hearing them pronounce it just Kinzu. Um, and a frame lock Tanto, Tanto flipper. Even more of a uh, surprise coming from Case. Uh, they have done some flippers in the past and even some uh, interesting blade shapes, uh, but those have been produced by Southern Grind outside. These are the first ones they've actually built in their standard facility, right alongside the slip joints. And given that that's the case, they actually did a really, really excellent job on these knives. I especially like the Marilla here. It's got a very usable blade shape. Uh, S35 VN steel here too, not uh, one of the uh, the simpler steels that they use on their slip joints. They're really trying to step it up in that regard. Has a bit of a, uh, a stout flat grind here. Again, not super slicey, but a good balance on this one between slicing and a little bit more brute strength and that nice stonewashed finish. That's gonna keep the, uh, the scratches kind of hidden a little bit as you use the knife. But it's got a good length, uh, th almost three and a half, uh, 3.4. The tip is very acute, so you can get a lot of uh, utility out of that for EDC types of things. Moving back to the handle, we've got aluminum. We've got the frame lock, as mentioned, with the lock bar insert there on the end. Ball bearings in the pivot, which enables the knife to flip quite nicely. Deep carry pocket clip as well. Uh, the screws on there may be a little bit high, uh, but it's still going to work pretty well, and it's still going to keep the knife very out of the way until you need it. Black, blue, or red available at this time, all with this G10 inlay on the front for a little bit of extra grip right there. Really nice shape, very useful. As far as the Kinzu, I like the aesthetics of the handle here a bit better. I like the sculpting that they did rather than putting a, uh, an inlay on the front. Gives it a little bit more of a premium look. And then the Tonto blade, of course, less my style. I'd rather, I'd almost kind of have a, a blend of the these two handles with the drop point blade for me personally, but yeah, that's all personal preference. Same kind of specs here, about 3.4 inches on the blade, S35 VN steel with a more robust tip in this case, thanks to the Tonto profile. Tiny, tiny hint of belly maybe to it. Actually, it's, it's pretty flat. The uh, sharpened edge kind of threw me off a little bit here. It's not super wide though, so you can do some kind of smaller chisely things with it if you wanted to. As far as the edge itself, it's pretty good. I'd probably strop it up a little bit for me personally, uh, but nothing too bad right there. Certainly going to cu cut quite nicely. And as far as the handle, again, kind of same specs here. Ball bearings in the pivot, frame lock. The sculpting is really nice. Same colors are available at this time. I do feel 
again, I, keep in mind I have slightly larger than average hands and some pretty fat fingers. I'm feeling a little bit cramped by the uh, the finger guard or the uh, the index finger area on this particular knife, not so much on the Marilla. Um, just when I'm holding it there and when I go to unlock it, I have to kind of back my finger up as you can see, because it's a little tight in there. Again, may not enter into the discussion with you personally. Um, I haven't talked about prices on these. Uh, 116 for the Kinzu and the Marilla comes in at 136. Pretty, uh, pretty competitively priced here. Pretty good value for what you're getting to. And it's a case flipper. And it's a case flipper. I mean, it's, and it's well done. How cool is that? How cool is that? Uh, moving on, we've got another company that you may not be used to making frame lock flippers either. And that's K-Bar, or more specifically, State and Union Cutlery, um, which is, or State and Union Knives, which is essentially K-Bar's custom shop. And their latest thing they've done, they've taken their Mark 98 flipper, which is about a, I don't know, like a $20 budget flipper, and fully transformed it into a premium product. Everything here is upgraded. None of the, it's, it's not just, you know, parts, or it's not just the same parts as the base model made out of different materials. This is ground up, just happens to be the same shape. Uh, prices on them, quite premium, uh, about $450 to start, about $495 for these with the extra engraving on the front. Uh, but a few different anodized colors, like I said, titanium frame lock. On the back, you can see there, you've got some contrasting colors on the pocket clip, two position pocket clip, I should say. One interesting thing here, you don't have a lock bar interface here, but you do have an over travel stop. It looks like essentially hinderers uh, disc over travel arrestor that you see normally on the outside, but on here, it's actually on the inside of the frame. Moving up to the blade, S35VN here as well, uh, three and three quarters of an inch long spear point profile with the dual full length fullers as well. Now, once I close the knife up, you've essentially got two opening methods. You've got the flipper tab, which combined with the cage ball bearings works really well. You can also one hand open it with your thumb by using those fullers. And that's gonna work equally well left or right handed thanks to the dual nature there. Of course, no left hand side pocket clip, but you know, can't have everything, can we? Um, but really cool to see them kind of taking one of their designs that really is kind of a, it's got some real solid bones and really going for the skies with it, going, shooting for the skies, shooting for the moon. To the moon! To, no, that's, this is not the Chris Reeve lunar landing knife or the Space Force from K-Bar. Those could be to the moon. Space. I think we've, we've run that into the ground or the sky or whatever, it doesn't matter. Cool knives, cool to see them really, like I said, stepping things up a notch and doing something really premium with some of their really good designs. Next up, uh, we'll keep it uh, with kind of the, the premium everyday carry stuff here for a minute. Uh, new Thunderbolt bolt action pens from Daryl Ralph. Uh, titanium bodies, there's two versions, both of them about 130. You can get the plain satin titanium or the really cool flame finish titanium that I've got right here. You get the heat finish really well done, really consistently done all the way around it. Creates a very striking look for sure. The action itself feels very satisfying. And the thing I like about a bolt action for me personally is when you're carrying it in your pocket, there's no clicky cap at the end that might get pressed and extend that uh, cartridge, extend the pen tip into your pocket and get ink all over your clothes. Nobody likes that. Uh, as far as that ink cartridge itself, it is a, uh, a gel refill in here, but it actually uses the, uh, it's a Parker style refill. So all kinds of different refills that are Parker compatible will work exceptionally well with this very finely finished pen. All right, next up, we've got a collectible edition Boker. This is the 2021 annual collector's edition Uno Trapper. Uno single blade trapper right here. Really cool knife. This is one of my favorites. Uh, of their uh, some of their limited editions I've seen this year. Pretty pricey, comes in about 345 right now, but I love this particular look. I've got a fixed blade that shares uh, the kind of brass combined with blue curly maple here. So immediately I was drawn to this personally because you know, look at it, it just has a really neat look that you don't see too often, I'd say, in the knife world. 
Really nice flame to those handles. Looks really great against that brass. And you've got, uh, I don't think it's an actual engraving. I think it might be stamped into the bolster, but you've got the Zollingen uh, label there as well, indicating this is a German made boker. Very classy. Blade itself is actually an American steel. This is a Chad Nichols uh, Ripple Damascus blade, uh, about three and a quarter inches long with kind of that long California style clip point almost. And what do we have here? Is that a full flat or is that a hollow ground? It feels kind of hollow ground. We'll confirm later. Um, either way, it's, uh, it's not gonna be too big of a difference on this particular blade size one way or the other. It is going to be a good slicer though, very much. Um, and I kind of hope uh, someone out there really does take this and carry it and use it. It definitely deserves to be. It's a really nice looking piece with some really solid working bones. But if you want to just put it on your shelf to admire, you can do that too. So speaking of good looking, hard working bones, we've got uh, a new maker here for us, a friend of mine actually. This is uh, Dragonfly Blade Works, maker John Kaufman. Uh, we've got a few of his models in right now. This particular one out of the uh, the batch we just got might be my favorite. It's between this and one of the other ones, uh, I might show you that one next week. This is uh, one of his Spitfire models coming in at 275, all handmade. Blade steel itself is 8670, quite tough. The handles here are Tasmanian blackwood, and all of the hardware or all of the uh, the fitments I should say are natural micarta in this case. You can see several pins, the lanyard tube itself as well as a pair of liners that gives the wood a little bit of stability and just a little bit of contrast without being too much, as it, it creates just a really cool look, this combination of materials. And combined with the blackened finish on this particular blade, in a way it reminds me like, you know, some old school firearms with, you know, gun blued blades and the, the rich stocks, the rich walnut stocks and the furniture on those. Something about this is really nice in that regard. Uh, about a three inch blade, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that yet. Perfect drop point shape for all your daily utility stuff. Make a good small outdoor knife, possibly small hunter. Really excellent handles, contoured perfectly. Fill the hand extremely, extremely nicely. Just kind of a perfect carry piece. Uh, the only thing you'll need is a sheath. These don't come uh, with sheaths, unfortunately, but really fantastic piece. Did you just tell us old firearms have gun blue blades? I might have, get over it, it's fine. They knew what I was talking about. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they do. <laughs> Check the tape. You know, some old school firearms with, you know, gun blued blades and the, the rich, I didn't even realize it. They, I mean, I talk about pens, I hold up a pen sometimes and refer to it as a blade or a knife. It's You've just- done it to flashlights too. I've done it to flashlights too. It's a bit of a problem. Everything's a knife to me. <laughs> um, speaking of, New Bastinelli fixed blade here. Uh, this is the Escari, it comes in about 350. Uh, this is made by Fox in Italy for Bastinelli. And it's kind of a, or the way I'm kind of seeing this is kind of an upscale take on a similar concept to like the K-Bar TDI knife, that last ditch defense knife. Because you've got a pretty aggressively raked handle here in sort of a pistol grip, speaking of you know firearm connections. That way it's very intuitive, even with minimal training, when you, you know, hold this and you point it forward, the blade is pointing forward as well. It's gonna go kind of right where you want it to go. And it's a pretty cool shape, I'd say. We have a hidden tang going about the full length of the handle, two piece micarta scales that meet up in the center on each side pretty much perfectly. I mean, even you can see a little bit of a seam, but even running my fingernail along it, barely, barely catch at all. You're not gonna feel that seam, certainly. You do have a bit of jimping, kind of milled in to the handles as well to give you some grip in some key places. Just, I really like the way this presents in both a forward or a reverse grip. There's enough of a contact patch there where you've got plenty to hold on to. And this would make a good daily utility knife as well. Really gonna be nice at opening boxes, powering through some cardboard, opening up straps, that sort of thing. Uh, M390 blade steel, I should mention, just under three inches as well with the compound, uh, sorry, not a compound grind, it's a, it's a full flat grind, but you do have the recurve section here, kind of a modified Tonto type of look. The sheath itself is really gonna aid you in kind of that EDC roll, or at least the self-defense roll if you need 
you know, you're gonna wanna actually have it on you. Kydex sheath, single strap, so you can carry it horizontally with a pull the dot snap on the end, so it's less likely to accidentally come loose. It'll only open in one single direction. Uh, if you want a different carry method, a small tech lock will work uh, with these two forward holes, but you're gonna need enough hardware to kind of space it out past the flare for the handle if you wanna go something like that. All right, this next knife isn't new new, but it's the first time we've finally gotten enough in stock that they haven't been turned right out the door again. So I actually have a chance to show the Benchmade Mini Adamas in a video. Really nicely done. This was kind of one of my favorites from the, uh, the preview we got earlier this year uh, when we interviewed Benchmade for SHOT Show, the SHOT Show that didn't happen. But the uh, mini version here comes in uh, about 21250 right now. Uh, so not that much less expensive than the full size, but for a lot of folks that full size is gonna be too much. If you want slightly more compact, but you still want kind of a hard use pocket knife without some of the extra bulk, definitely a good place to look. Um, it's not a one for one, but in my mind, this stacks up really nicely with something like the DPX Hest for a you know, smaller, but still very robust folder. Uh, the crew wear steel here is gonna be excellent. Great upgrade over the uh, D2 that the full size Adamas is used to have. You've got a ton, ton more toughness than the D2 and you've still got really excellent edge retention. Blade length itself, three and a quarter, kind of a combat knife inspired blade shape, just scaled down a little bit of course. And despite many in the name, still offers a hand filling grip, even if you have slightly larger than average hands like myself, I still don't feel cramped on this. I'm not running off the back side of the handle. No problem there at all. If you've got truly big paws, might be, a, might be an issue, but I really, really am impressed with the fit and both the comfort of the handle, especially compared to the blockier, older Adamas generation. Deep carry pocket clip is gonna keep it mostly out of the way, but thanks to the beak here at the back, there's still gonna, gonna be a decent amount to grab hold of in the pocket. You can kind of grab onto it with, for me anyway, it would work with my, uh, my middle finger reaching in, pull off of that hook, it works very well. Ambidextrous axis lock. This one's broken in perfectly right out of the box. Nice, smooth operation. You can do that wrist flick uh, as always, or you can open it more deliberately with the thumb studs, of course. I really dig it. I like the amount of thumb guard or amount of finger guard right there. It's enough for protection, but not so much that it cramps the rest of the usage. No, it's uh, honestly no wonder why these have been going out the door so quickly because I think it's definitely worth a look. All right, we've shown a lot of stuff here that's fairly expensive uh, for most folks, except for like, you know, that $30 knife there at the beginning. Uh, so we've got some more budget oriented stuff to close things out. And we're gonna go from one knife that you might not have expected a mini, minier version of to another knife you might not have expected a minier version of. The ever popular Elementum. Uh, in in Civivi's kind of quest to make the Elementum everything to everyone out there, they've put out a new keychain sized model, the Mini Elementum. Uh, comes in about $42.50 for the brass or copper versions that just dropped. Uh, although I fully expect we'd, uh, we're, we're likely to see some things like G10 in the future. Maybe not Micarta, it depends, uh, because you know this is not a liner lock like the, uh, the standard Elementum. We've actually got a frame lock here. And because of that, there's no liner on the front to mount the scale to. This copper or this brass piece is the, uh, the front handle full stop. So G10 could probably handle it. Not sure about Micarta at this size. So keep that handle in mind. It. Good job. <laughs> um, as for the handle, let's keep talking about that. Uh, about a two finger grip for most. I can kind of get a little bit on there, but if this is living on your keychain, you're likely to have uh, more coming off the back in the form of your keys, so that could provide a little more security. 14C 28N blade steel, stainless, uh, just under two inches long, about 1.8. And you can see a kind of horizontal grained finish that mimics the, uh, the patinaed or the antiqued finish they gave to these copper scales. Now, with a knife this small, flipping action, in my mind was gonna be very hard to get right. I was uh, very curious to see, very honestly nervous too. Sometimes these small guys, to get them to, to flip right, you might 
it might feel a little unsafe. You're putting a lot of force or a lot of motion into it. Not the case at all with this guy. Just grip it. I mean, I'm even resting my finger a little bit on the frame lock bar because it's kind of hard not to at this size. Flips really easily. Ball bearings, we'll do that again. It's just, just a gentle touch. It doesn't take much. It's not gonna fly out on its own, but really well executed, I've got to say. And really cool. And for the Elementum collectors out there, which is quickly becoming a thing, got another thing to kind of sink your teeth into. Uh, another uh, couple of releases from Civivi. We've got a new Justin Lundquist design. This is the Lumi. Uh, they come in uh, just under 50 bucks or 51 for the Micarta version. They extra, extra dollar, <laughs> which is kind of funny to me. Um, but very similar in some respects to uh, the Wii knives. I think it's the Angst, uh, one of the uh, Lundquist uh, knives from the Wii lineup. Similar shape, similar size, but now more affordable, of course. Blade steel, 14C28 again. Really, really solid option on the budget end of things, uh, about 2.5 inches, just over. So if you need something that's under 2.5, this isn't quite gonna cut it. But you've got a hollow grind here and a very acute tip. Just gonna make a nice kind of everyday scalpel, so to speak. The Micarta is very nice. It feels like there's a hint of contour to it. Uh, the green color is good and you get a good bit of texture from the matte finish on that as well. Liner lock ball bearings in the pivot, reversible deep carry pocket clip, which is quite nice. And one of those rounded top flippers that I actually kind of like. Front flippers can sometimes give me a little bit of trouble, but this top flipper works really well with an index finger or with kind of that front flipping action if you want to use your thumb as well. A couple different fidgety options to play with. It's going to feel really nice. It's going to cut really nice on the smaller scale of things and it's going to carry fairly unobtrusively as well. Next up is a new fixed blade, new pocket fix, fixed blade actually, we'll get to that. Uh, this is an Ostop Hell design, this is the Minimus, comes in 55 bucks, two inch blade, single piece construction, 10 CR series stainless, which is uh, metallurgically should be the same as VG10. So really good performance there for the price and just a really good unobtrusive shape for everyday use. Uh, two inches, like I said, full flat grind. You can get it in a stone wash or a black stone washed finish that you see right here. On this guy, feels about a, a three finger grip, but you've got a fob at the end with a little Civivi bead to give you a little more to grab onto if you need it. Just feels really nice. Very utilitarian blade shape, certainly gonna work very well. Um, but over here, somewhere, is the sheath. And you can wear it two ways, essentially, out of the box. Small Kydex piece, it does come with a breakaway uh, ball chain, so you can neck carry it quite easily, but it also comes with a pocket clip, making this officially a pocket fix blade. Carries fairly high. You're gonna, as you can see, have a fair bit of handle sticking up to grab onto. Uh, it's set up right now for uh, left-hand carry, but very easy to reverse that clip to carry it in whichever pocket you so choose. Really nice guys, you guys know I like a pocket fix blade and I'm always happy to see more on the market. Next up is a not so pockety fix blade, a uh, new Bob Terzola release from Civivi. This is the Tamashi, comes in about 66.50 right now. Uh, blade is D2, length is just over four inches and you've got a trailing point here that has some pretty strong Asian feeling influences to me. It's almost traditional Tonto-like uh, in its nature as opposed to you know, the more American or Western style Tonto you see on that case Kinzu from earlier. Uh, but it's got a really cool slicing profile to it. Uh, just about a full flat grind, a little bit thicker on the blade stock for some rigidity and strength there. But you do have a swedge kind of on the leading two thirds of the blade to relieve some, uh, some height and relieve some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Resistance there when you're slicing through a particular cut. The handles are really nice. You can get them in black or green G10. A Little bit of a swell going on here. Subtle, but it really is effective in making it feel much more comfortable than just some slab sided construction. And really nice finish too. It's almost seamless. Again, kind of like that uh, Bastinelli we saw before, 
not quite a full length tang uh, based on some magnet testing. The tang is going to end about right here, maybe about three quarters of an inch in front of the lanyard tube there at the back. But these two pieces of G10 made up so nicely. It's got a really cool uh, kind of vibe to it. It's going to keep your hands off of the metal, except for, you know, the pin there at the front and just removes another potential area for hot spots where you might have a little bit of a proud tang sticking out. Just really nice, holds really nicely. Gonna make a pretty good steak knife too, maybe a gentleman's steak knife thing going on. No one's probably gonna do that, but you should, because I think that'd be pretty cool. Well, they're gonna now. They're gonna now. Uh, maybe that's why I say things. <laughs> Kydex sheath on this guy as well. Really positive click, as you could see. And on the back, we've got the T-clip, which is made by Civivi, but it is a Bob Terzola, essentially, you know, his improvement on the Blade Tech Tech Lock, or what he sees as an improvement there, uh, in that you've got an infinitely adjustable belt stop here on the front. It's, rather than having specific um, kind of notches that you could move that in, you loosen this screw and you can perfectly size this to wherever you want. The whole pattern is going to fit the uh, the standard sized tech lock stuff, no problem. It's got that same thing going on, but you've also got two slots here on the side rather than two additional holes. So even more kind of versatility built in and it's still gonna be just as secure as one of those standard models. Very, very cool little tweaks. And I think you can buy these by themselves too. You can buy the T-clip separately, really affordable. They're like five bucks maybe, something really low graphic next to your head. It'll be right up here or over here. And there will be a link to it in the description. Really nice, really, uh, really affordable way to kind of beef up your fixed blade sheath carrying arsenal, so to speak. All right, next up, uh, another really good budget release, a new folder from Essie. This is the Chirp. Um, pretty good deal for what you're getting here as well. You've got a D2 blade coming in 2.7 inches, 20 bucks for these standard models. Really, really good. Uh, you've also got, uh, or you've got Micarta in green or natural. And you've also got carbon fiber for 10 bucks more. But the true bargain is definitely these Micarta models. Now it's a fairly basic, simple design, just kind of a, a mostly oval handle. It's a two hand opener, but you get some of the modern conveniences like the liner lock which holds it open quite well. And you get a two position pocket clip, right side tip up or tip down carry. Really a pretty robust feeling clip as well. Just a, a great little daily utility right here. Uh, blade length, all right, I mentioned the blade length, but you've got a full flat grind there. It's got a nice kind of elliptical drop point shape. It's gonna be a good slicer, gonna be a good small utility blade. Really good, 20 bucks for that guy right there. Really, really well done, very good. Last but not least, we're gonna go back into the expensive realm with an extension to the Henkel's Bob Kramer series of kitchen knives. Uh, this one comes in about four, 400 bucks for this particular Nakiri. Now the standard versions of this, uh, this Kramer series, of course, they come with a, a 52100, I believe, carbon steel blade and a wood handle. The upgraded versions here feature linen micarta for the handles and you get a little bit of shimmer because it's kind of black and brown layers. Shimmer is not the right word, but you get the layering effect. And of course the uh, mosaic pin there as well. And the blade steel gets an upgrade to this Damascus clad uh, steel. And I say Damascus clad because this does appear or this is um, two layers of Damascus steel, which of course in and of itself have several layers and a central core of actually a powder metallurgy steel here. Uh, they call it MC63, which is SG2, which is also used by Felicneven as 3G. Um, several different names for this steel, but moral of the story is you're going to be getting a lot of edge retention and performance out of this, which is especially nice on this kind of vegetable knife pattern here, like the Nikiri is traditional, a, you know, a vegetable chopper really beautiful, really high performance, really nice details that you might expect from a Bob Kramer design. You've got a crown spine here. You've even got a tapered tang going on. It's fairly subtle because this is pretty thin blade stock to begin with, but you know, I love that they really committed, that uh, Zwilling really committed to 
pulling off some of those custom Bob Kramer details on their production knives. And if you're looking for you know, some production knives that could be truly world-class and truly the pinnacle of your kitchen collection, these guys are definitely, definitely worth your time. Speaking of time, that is all the time we've got for today's video. Make sure to let me know what you thought of these knives in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on any of them, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program so that at least you'll earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you put your money down on one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.